Hey, welcome back options traders. I hope everybody had a fabulous weekend. And in this video, we're going to answer a question that was asked by one of the traders last week. What's the maximum value for a call option? It's a good question. And this falls under what are called option pricing principles or pricing boundaries. There's a lot of them. There's just certain ranges where options, calls and puts have to fall. There's only so high they can get, only so low they can go. There are certain ranges between strikes. So again, they are just part of the option pricing principles, and this is one of them. So we're just going to look at what's the maximum value for a call option. So let's go find out. And as always, please be sure to click like and subscribe. Definitely helps to promote the channel and is always appreciated. So the maximum value for a call, let's get right down to the answer. Maximum value is the stock's price catches a lot of people off guard because we never see an options price get anywhere near that. But remember, it's not saying what is typical. The question is what's the maximum it could ever be. So let's say that the stock is trading for a hundred. What we know for sure is that no call strike could be greater than a hundred bucks. Now, of course, if something did hit a hundred, there are other relationships between the strikes that would send a cascade through the entire chain to where they wouldn't all trade for a hundred. But for any given strike, the very biggest price it could ever have is the price of the stock. Now, how do we know that? Well, like most of these pricing principles, these are all governed by arbitrage. Arbitrage, as I've talked about before, is this concept of free money because of a pricing relationship. So let's say that the stock is trading for 100. And let's just say that hypothetically, the $100 call went to 101. It went beyond the current stock price. So what's going to happen here? Well, this sets up the arbitrage. This is how we know this could never happen. Arbitragers would come in and buy the stock for 100 and they would sell the call for 101. And this of course is going to give them a net credit of a buck, right? If you spend $100 and then turn around and receive 101, on a net basis, you have a dollar in your pocket. You could look at it as though you sold the call for 101 and took 100 of those dollars to buy the stock. So this is what sets up the arbitrage. You don't even need your own cash to create the trade. There's absolutely no reason to not do it. So again, it's getting paid to take the shares of stock. So, hey, why not? And arbitragers will realize this opportunity and they're going to swoop in on it. And that of course is what will force this call option to fall below the stock's price. So again, there's no reason to not jump in on this opportunity. And that's what arbitragers will do. And as they do, they're going to put selling pressure on the $100 call, drive its price down. And as they're going out to buy the stock, they're going to push its price up. And that's what's going to reverse this relationship. And once the calls price falls below the stock price, that's when the free money gets turned off. So that's how we know for sure that the absolute maximum that a calls price could ever be is the stock. So another way to look at it is that you are getting a covered call for a credit. So let's say that the stock is 100 and you write the $100 call for 101. This is your risk graph. Notice that your maximum gain up here is 101. And the worst that can happen is you gain a buck. That's if the stock falls all the way to zero. But remember, you paid 100 and collected 101. So worst case is you make a buck. That's why there's no reason to not do this trade. But if you do get called out, for any stock price above 100, you're going to receive 100 bucks back from the assignment. And so that's what makes the maximum gain 101. So, hey, why not? The best you can do is 101, and the worst you can do is one. Normally, your risk graph will have some part of it that will fall below zero, but not in this case. That's what makes it an arbitrage. Now, what would happen if we had maybe a lower strike? Let's say the $80 call trading for more than the stock's price. Maybe the $80 call goes to 101. Well, we get a similar thing. Now your maximum gain is 81 and the worst is a dollar. So again, there's no reason to not take this. So if you spent a hundred and collect 101 from the sale of the 80 call, we know you've got a dollar in the pocket. That's the worst that can happen if the stock goes to zero. But if you get called out, you are taking a $20 loss on the stock right? You paid a hundred, but you're getting assigned at 80. So it's just going to be the strike plus that buck. 
So if the $60 call were trading for 101, 61 would be the maximum gain. So again, it just shows that no strike could ever reach the stock's price. So even though I've shown that the maximum price that any call option could be is the stock's price, that maximum price is highly unlikely. And that's why you're never going to see anything that's even remotely close to that high, at least most likely not going to ever see that. So the reason is that call prices will likely be bid lower long before they get close to the stock's price. So as an example, let's say that the stock is trading for 100 and the $100 call is trading for 60. Now we just looked at an example of this where it was trading for 101 and that of course would set up the arbitrage. But notice we're a long ways from 101, but this would be the risk graph. So we've got the bend right here at the 100 strike, but look at the maximum gain is 60. So you bought the stock for 100, but you've got the obligation to sell for 100. So there's really no way that you can gain other than the extrinsic value. So that's your maximum gain. And of course your maximum loss would be 40. And that's because you bought shares for 100, but look at the size of that downside hedge. The stock could fall 60% of its current price and you would just break even. And that's because you collected 60% of that stock's price up front. So you'd have to say, that seems like a really, really good deal. So you'd have to believe that speculators would start jumping on this opportunity, buying the stock and selling the 100 call for 60, rather than saying, oh, let's wait until it gets up to 100. So that's the main thing to see is that that is the theoretical maximum. But if you're thinking that sounds odd, I've never seen anything quite that high. You're right about that as well. And hopefully this gives you a reason why. You would see speculators jumping on that long before it ever got to those levels. So I hope that helps to answer the question. And if any of you have other questions, please post them. Always great to have ideas from the traders. And for anyone who'd like to learn more about the art and science of options trading, please check out the Alpha Trader course, Strategy Lab, and a technical analysis course. It's all at optionsa-z.com. Also, please join us on Options A to Z's Facebook trading group, and you can find a link in the description below.